This is the thing that I build in this video. It's a volcano tamer. I really like this one. It's crazy simple. I know I, I just posted a volcano tamer for simple volcano taming situations like two videos ago, but I've been doing so much work on, on volcanoes that I discovered this new way and it's fabulous and I just have to show it to you. When you're developing a volcano tamer, it's very easy to accidentally design it in a way that deletes most of the heat from the volcano. And of course, that's really bad if you're trying to use that heat in order to drive steam turbines. Uh, one of the things that I really like about this method is it completely gets around all of the ways you could possibly accidentally delete the heat. If you wanna know more about those ways where heat gets easily deleted when you're not expecting it, you can go watch the first part of this series. Well, I'm gonna give you a quick overview and then I will have my dupes build the entire thing so that you can see all of the details of building it. The volcano is in a vacuum up here, and when the magma erupts, then it runs off the side this way and down these this kind of stairway of tiles. Um, I've been calling this a spillway. This spillway is absolutely the key for making this entire thing work as elegantly as it does. Uh, so what happens is the magma starts running down these stairs and the temp shift plates underneath down here, they have a range of one, so they can actually reach diagonally up above these stairs and cool off that magma as it runs down the stairs. As the magma runs down the stairs, it cools off. When the magma freezes, it turns into rock. Since all of these mesh tiles are over the stairs, the rock has nowhere to go. It doesn't like to have to coexist in a tile, including mesh tiles. Those chunks of rock go underneath the spillway. Magma freezes in this tile, the chunk of rock will appear down here in this tile and fall down into, this, uh, into the bottom of this other room. The really cool thing about that is it's like this automatic passive way to separate the igneous rock from the magma that's not cool yet. I'm going to brush some magma in just so that you can see how that works. I'm going to drop a little magma up here and let's watch it as it spills down. Uh, it'll cool off and you see here's the chunks of igneous rock falling through, falling through the bottom of the spillway. They're quite hot and eventually all of this magma will, have, will be frozen away and be gone and only only the igneous rock down here in the bottom will remain. Pretty neat, right? Okay, so after the igneous rock comes down here, all of the heat is down here in this room. All of the heat from the magma was absorbed by these temp shift plates and these tiles. So that heat is in this room. The igneous rock is sitting in a puddle of molten lead. Molten lead has a high enough thermal conductivity to get that heat out of the rock fast enough to make it useful. So think of this room down here with these metal tiles around it, these obsidian tiles on top, all of the temp shift plates inside and full of lots and lots of steam is being a very high quality heat sink. It has a very high heat capacity and a very fast ability to absorb heat out of that magma. The rest of this setup is actually pretty simple. It's just steam and steam turbines. I have a door right here and when it's closed, heat can move from this side to this side. You can maintain a temperature of the steam in this room of about 200 degrees. That steam is uh, eaten by the steam turbines in order to generate power. You'll notice I have an aqua tuner in this room. The steam turbines generate a fair bit of heat and they need to be cooled down. And so the aqua tuner's job is just that. There is a liquid vent for putting more water into this heat sink room. The amount of heat that this room can absorb depends on how much steam is in it. So if you find yourself wanting to absorb more heat because you're not using it very fast, uh, like you're not running these steam turbines all the time, then you can add water to this room. Um, this switch will, let, will automatically turn on and add water if the temperature of this room gets to be over 900 degrees. 900 degrees seems to be about the limit for the temperature you want this room to be because if it's any more than that, then it's hard to cool off the magma fast enough as it runs down the spillway. If you don't cool off the magma fast enough as it runs down the spillway, then it will pool down here in the bottom and you'll have too much magma in one place and it will freeze into uh, tile, whole tiles of igneous rock instead of just chunks of igneous rock. I think that's about it for an overview of how this build works. One of the things that's interesting about this build is you don't need steel for anything. The only thing I used steel for is the thermo aqua tuner. You could just use a gold amalgam aqua tuner. Near the end of this video, I'll talk about the slight modification 
modifications you have to make in order to use a gold amalgam aqua tuner instead of a steel aqua tuner. I'm going to use actual dupes to build this one. Uh, I think people mostly like that, although seriously I get mixed reviews. Some of you guys just want me to use the sandbox. Um, so the first thing that we need is a vacuum around the volcano, and I... I'll leave a space up here for a gas pump, and I need a airlock going into the room. So I'll build my airlock like that. We need a bottle emptier. The bottle emptier will put water into this airlock so that we can maintain a vacuum in here. I'm going to put in a gas pump right here. Oops, there we go. I'm not going to actually connect the gas pump to power quite yet. There's no reason to be running the pump until this room is enclosed anyway. But now I have to do a little bit of planning. I'm going to pause this and blueprint in what I want the rest of these rooms to kind of look like. So the magma will come out of the volcano. And this wall that I put in is temporary. I'm only putting it there to enclose this space so that I can pump it out and make it a vacuum. Uh, so the magma will run off this side and down this spillway uh, where the magma will, will cool and once it cools it will fall out the bottom into another room and that room the room that the uh, the rocks fall into it's really important that it's a quality heat sink and by that I mean it's always able to absorb the heat from the magma going down these stairs. First of all, I'm gonna line the room in metal tiles like this. And the reason why I made it this shape is because I have three metal tiles on this side so that the heat can go through, you know, some heat transfer thing in order to get into the steam for my steam turbines. And I had to make it this wide because this square up here is important. The, the, the magma that's sitting on top of this step, when it freezes into rock, that rock has to go into there. So I can't make the room any narrower than this. So this is the shape that I want the room, but the room also needs to be wrapped in insulation. And uh, just to demonstrate what I'm thinking for the, for the steam turbines, I'm going to put a door over here so that when the door is closed, it lets heat through into some kind of steam room on this side. Uh, but now that I think about it, I kind of want that steam room to be three tiles high. So I'm going to add another tile. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that works out quite well. Let's do it that way. Uh, so this will be a steam chamber. And this will be a chamber for steam turbines. Um, but that's not what's that's not what's important right now. I just need to get these uh, these other rooms over here next to the uh, volcano started. So that's my that's my basic layout. But of course, I need my dupes to be able to get in here and build this stuff. So I don't actually want to build all of this right now. I need to give my dupes some kind of an access to get inside here and start building these things. And I'm going to do that by just putting a ladder down through the top. So my dupes can run over the top of this. Here's a ladder so they can go down that side. And here's a, some ladders so that they can go down inside these rooms. And these rooms, by the way, this one and this one, they have to all also be a vacuum. So I'm going to start filling those in with tiles. Of course, they have to build the outside first, the, the insulation out here. So I can't put in these metal tiles yet. And that door, yeah, that door is good where it is. And I think, I think I'm ready to go. Right, so the way I have this set up right now, if the volcano erupted unexpectedly, I think it would be okay. It's sort of in a room. It's not gonna, nothing's gonna explode. You know, I'll just keep the magma in here until I use it later or I'll find something else to do with it, I guess. Once this room, these rooms over here, once they're complete, you can let the magma spill in there. At least I think so, because it's not gonna mess up the vacuum. I mean, that's eventually that's where you want the heat to be. So it seems like that would be okay to me. So I'm going to start building in more tiles and stuff over here. Remember, I have to I have to fill all of this in with tiles in order to make the vacuum. Well, that's actually going really fast. I'm going to start blueprinting in the the steam room and steam turbines and stuff. So this is where some metal tiles will go, and this will be the first. This will be the first tile that's below my steam room. So one, two, three, four, five for one steam turbine. One, two, three, four, five for two. One, two, three, four, five is three steam turbines. Um, since I'm making a steam room, I have to make it into I have to make this room into a vacuum also. Well, there's a lot of vacuums in this in this build. Uh, so I've got to put a an airlock on that. Just like that. And I'll put a I'll put the bottle emptier on there in order to fill up this airlock with water. Oh, by the way, I need to set this one to start doing its job. I'm going to close off that 
steam room. Got to start filling all this up with tiles in order to make this a vacuum. So above my steam room, I need a room for steam turbines. Put those in just like that. I won't, I won't close the end yet. And my dupes have to have some way to get over here and work, get into these rooms and work on stuff. So I'm going to put some ladders in so they can run over the top of all of this. Like, I guess right there. That looks like a good spot. You know what? I'm going to deconstruct all of this. Cancel all of this. So I have to fill in. This is going to be my room full of steam. I have to fill that in with tiles in order to make it a vacuum, right? I'm going to start building those tiles in from the bottom up. If I don't... So I can't. I don't want to put a ceiling on that room yet because I, my dupes won't be able to get in to build a row at a time. So a row at a time like this works much better for me. I've been kind of neglecting this one. Let's work harder on getting this one filled in. So by the way, I'm using iron for all of the metal tiles. And I used obsidian and ceramic for the ladders and the insulation. And obsidian and ceramic can resist the temperature of the magma then iron will melt if it got the full heat of the magma but the iron down here in this room doesn't get the full heat of the magma remember we, we cool it off and turn the magma into rock before it falls in here all right so oh there's something else i want to do so i'm going to put a row of tiles in here at the bottom and i'm going to make them out of lead and the reason i'm doing that is because i want a a p little puddle of lead down here in the bottom of this room in order to help transfer heat out of the rock uh, that is sitting in the bottom of that room. I'll deconstruct them later. So I got myself in a situation over here where I have to build one tile at a time to close up this sort of tunnel. This water lock down here is, oh, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until it's a little more full than that before I hollow this out. Um, let's put in those steam turbines. One of the things that I've noticed that people dislike, and I'm, I'm not sure if it really makes any difference in the, you know, the capability or efficiency of the, of, the, of the build or anything like that, but one thing that people definitely don't like is the poor aesthetics of having the, the steam turbine on the left working at its maximum capacity and the steam turbine on the right working at low capacity. Anyway, the way, to, the way to fix that is just take all of the water from all of the steam turbines and deposit it over here in the hot part of the room where all of the heat comes from. That will make all of the steam that's produced the same temperature, and the steam turbines will all operate at the same power output. All right, we have enough water in this water lock now, so I'm going to get rid of that bottle emptier, and I can hollow all of this out uh, so that it is a nice vacuum ready to be built in. Um, up here, this is ready to be hollowed out, but actually I need to I need to vacuum out this room first. I forgot to connect the power so that that would happen. While that pumps out, I can't I can't really do anything with this until that's done. Uh, but this vacuum down here is ready to go. Let me put in the power wire for these guys. I need to be able to open and close this door uh, in an automated way, so I also need an automation wire. So we also need a thermal sensor on that boy. And all right, now that that's all built, we can put in put in that last metal tile and our our heat interlock thing will, is working. The other stuff we need in this room is an aqua tuner. I'm going to use a steel aqua tuner. Um, although, you know what? This build does not need steel at all. You could use a gold amalgam aqua tuner and I'll talk about that near the end of the video. The only thing in this build that is steel is the steel aqua tuner. 
It just having the steel aqua tuner makes such a big difference for you know the temperature of the steam and everything that it's probably worth doing if you have the steel. So I'm just making a cooling loop right now. If you've seen my videos, you've seen me do this like a hundred times. I basically have a I have a cooling loop. It'll carry water around in a circle, and when it warms up enough that the aqua tuner can cool it down without uh, freezing it and breaking the pipes then it, the aqua tuner will turn on and it'll go through the aqua tuner and if it's not warm enough for that if it's too cold then the aqua tuner will be off and it will go past the aqua tuner and over this bridge instead so the loop will always be moving even if the aqua tuner isn't running that's the idea I'm using the liquid pipe thermal sensor to check the temperature of the water that will be in this pipe coming up to the aqua tuner. So if it's warm enough, then I will tell it to turn the aqua tuner on. So if this is above 14 degrees, then send a green signal and turn the aqua tuner on. You'll notice that I put a, I put a filter gate in here, and that's just to keep the aqua tuner from turning on and off really fast. That's all that is. That's my standard aqua tuner setup for everything. What else do we need down here in this room? We need water in order to make steam. I'm just going to put a bottle emptier in here for that. What else do we need in that room? Oh, I know, uh, temp shift the plate. So the heat will come from over here. This is the heat sink room, right? When this door is closed, then the heat will be able to transfer from these metal tiles through the door into these metal tiles. And then I wanna get the heat out of those metal tiles and into the steam. Steam actually doesn't do that very well by itself, so I'm going to stick some temp shift plates. About three is probably fine. Remember, since I since I have my vent for all of my water over here, all of the heating happens right here. So there's really no sense in putting more temp shift plates all the way down this, this chamber. Uh, I'm not sure I was clear about it. The reason I'm putting water in this room is because when this room gets hot, there needs to be enough water in it to make the right amount of steam that I want in this room. I like to go for about 200 kilograms per tile. That is 600 kilograms per tile of water along the bottom of the chamber. Okay, what else is going on in the, in the game? Um, this, this chamber with the volcano has been vacuumed out, so we don't need the, uh, the gas pump anymore. Since this is a vacuum now, I'm free to start digging all of this out. Remember that this, these four metal tiles down here at the bottom are made of lead. Their job is to melt and turn into a puddle of lead. I'm going to actually just deconstruct them all together. I'll leave those chunks of lead down here at the bottom of the, of the room. Now remember I was talking about how this room, it's really important that it has a nice high heat capacity and it's a real effective heat sink. Uh, so in order to make that happen, I'm going to put diamond temp shift plates in underneath each step of that spillway. Now remember, these temp shift plates, that's the thing that reaches up into this tile and cools that off by taking heat from that spot and transmitting it into the, the steam that's down here in this room, into the heat sink, basically. And so it's really important that that works really well, because if the magma doesn't cool off fast enough as it's falling down this spillway, then it'll gather in the bottom into quantities that are too big to freeze into a chunk of rock and instead they will they will freeze into a whole tile of rock and that's going to gum up everything uh, so nice high quality heat sink nice high quality temp shift plates um, i'm also going to fill in i'm just going to fill in the rest of this whole room with diamond temp shift plates I, i'm not sure if diamond is necessary for that probably not uh, but that's how i did it in my experiments I'm going to start putting the mesh tiles in here, and I'm using Wolframite for that, and uh, I consider I kind of consider Wolframite to be a more valuable resource than steel, but this build is all about building this thing using low, <laughs> easy, easy to obtain materials, and Wolframite is easier to obtain than steel. Um, so I'm pretty much ready to close this off 
uh, but there's something else I need to do. We need we eventually are going to want to have a whole bunch of steam down in here in this uh, this heat sink room. Uh, in fact, the heat capacity of the heat sink comes from the steam. So we need to get some water in there. You probably want to go about 200 kilograms per tile. If you do 100 kilograms per tile, I don't think it'll work. I think this room will get too hot too quickly, and it won't be able to keep the magma cool as it goes down the spillway, and the the magma will pool down here and freeze into tiles of, of igneous rock. So I'm thinking like 200 kilograms per tile in here at minimum. And if you want to be able to save up more power for later, then you can increase that amount so that its temperature stays relatively steady, but it holds a tremendous amount of heat. Uh, the way I'm going to put water into this room is with just a regular old liquid vent and an obsidian pipe. And we'll use a liquid shutoff. And so I, you can control when water goes in just by opening the liquid shutoff. And I, I kind of want to just do that manually right now. So I'm just going to put a, um, an Atmos sensor here, which I like. To, uh, so as soon as my dupes have this stuff built in, then I'll be able to close up this hole. And this part of the system ought to be ready to work. I'm going to sweep out some of this crap down here. The one thing I don't want to sweep out is the lead. So I'm going to unsweep the lead. Remember the lead, its job is to stay in there and melt into a puddle of lead. While I'm at it, I'll sweep up everything else that's sitting around. Whoops, where'd the lead go? What? You guys, that's... What? I didn't... <laughs> now I've got to figure out some other way to get lead down there. It's actually not that hard. I'll just build some tiles up here. Then I'll deconstruct them and their debris will just fall down into the bottom of this and it's all the same. I need my dupes to be able to get down here and start building this this stuff. So I'm just going to build a ladder for that. This stuff is built in. So now I can just deconstruct these lead. The lead will fall down to the bottom where it should be so that it can be a puddle later. And I can put in that obsidian tile. That now our spillway is complete. We just need to put the mesh tiles above it. We only have 45 kilograms of water per tile over here so far. I was thinking 600 would be ideal. So we have a long way to go. In order to fill this more quickly, I could have piped the water in here. But I'll tell you what, I'm just going to use a whole bunch more bottle emptiers. I'm going to put in some more power wires. Um, I need one over here to connect to the, the aqua tuner. And I also want to put a battery in. I'm going to use steel for that also, I suppose. That's just because I need to have some kind of buffer for the power so that my aqua tuner can run. If you have all of this wired into your main power grid in your base, the battery doesn't matter. I need to get the rest of these mesh tiles in. I sandboxed in a water source so that I can turn the water on and let it in here. Like I was saying, I think you need about 200 kilograms of steam per tile in this heat sink in order to cool down the magma fast enough and contain the heat in the heat sink. So since there's 18 tiles in this room, that means I need 3,600 kilograms of water. All right, that's good. So this room is ready to go. This room is ready to go. The volcano room is ready to go. This stuff is ready to go. How much water do we have? 450 kilograms. So that's 150 kilograms per tile in this steam room. I'm satisfied with it. I'm going to get rid of the, the bottle emptiers and we'll go with that. Let's set up some of the automation. This door needs to stop letting heat from our heat sink over here into the steam if this temperature of the steam is up to 200 degrees. I'm going to set it at 198. And that's because the aqua tuner down here generates heat. So let's close up this room. Depending how you play the game, you might want to preserve the airlock that you made out here so that if you ever need to get your dupes back into the steam room for some reason, you can just unconstruct these two tiles and the airlock will already be there and they can go in. One thing that I forgot is I need a way to get water into the cooling loop and I'm just going to do that by bridging it in from the exhaust that comes from the steam turbines. As soon as that's in I will close off this, uh, I will build a couple of insulation tiles here to close off that room. Just like that and I think we'll be done. What's left is to wait for the volcano to erupt. For the first eruption, I'm going to simulate it because I don't feel like waiting. 292 kilograms for 73 seconds. I will time out 72 seconds. Here we go. One, two, 
three, four. So you can see the magma is running down the spillway and it's running onto those um, obsidian tiles and the temp shift plates are reaching through the cracks and cooling down the magma and turning it into rock. Okay, I'm certain that's plenty. Let's see how our temperatures are doing. The steam in the room is up to 320. The lead melted, guys. Check it out. Now the heat that's in these rocks will come out pretty fast and warm up everything even more. we are actually getting some steam over here in the steam room. It still has a ways to go before it's hot enough to make the steam turbines work. Check it out guys. So this is still, this is only a couple of cycles after that one eruption that I simulated with the sandbox and the steam turbines are starting to sputter to life. All of the water has evaporated from the steam room and it's all steam now. So it's just a matter of getting it up to at least 125 degrees. The water coming out of the steam turbines right now is just being used to fill the cooling loop as it should until the cooling loop is completely full. Uh, the temperature of our heat sink over here is still oh, it's still over 400 degrees. Yeah, so this is, uh, I'm actually quite surprised. This is still just from one eruption. It's not running real hot yet, but it is running and it is generating power. I'm pretty happy with that. The aqua tuner will not draw so much power once everything is cooled down and it only has to maintain the temperature instead of actually make everything cold. Alright, the volcano is going to erupt again in about about a minute. Have a look at how good this turned out though. We simulated one eruption of the volcano and nothing was even warmed up yet and we still have our steam turbines working not not quite up at their capacity, but pretty close. Looks like they're all over 700 watts right now. The steam room is still at 400 degrees and it has a pretty high heat capacity. Here comes our, our volcano eruption. What we're going to see is the magma is going to erupt out of the volcano and it's going to start running down this spillway. Now the magma, as it, re as it lands on each one of these steps, it's getting cooled by the temp shift plates in this heat sink and when it freezes into rock that rock has nowhere to go but underneath the spillway because all of these mesh tiles are in the way and that's why the rock is falling out of the bottom here so it's falling down into the bottom of this and there is i have a puddle of molten lead down here in the bottom molten lead is a pretty good heat conductor so the heat in all of this hot rock can get out of the rock and into this whole heat sink through the molten lead we're already up to looks like 650 degrees here in the heat sink now so this gets really hot and stores up that heat when the steam in this room is cool enough then this door will close which lets the heat out of this room and into the steam and see it's opening and closing right now in order to maintain a nice about 200 degrees temperature of steam in this room. Uh, and then the rest is uh, just steam turbines and, uh, and steam room. Let's talk about limitations. The, the main limitation of this build is that the heat sink can only absorb so much heat. Once it's over, I think about 900 degrees, then the m more magma coming down the spillway will not necessarily solidify soon enough and it can pool down in the bottom and freeze into a block of igneous rock. Fortunately, you can make this this uh, this heat sink have an unbelievably large heat capacity just by adding more and more water to it. Uh, the limit to that, at least with this simple setup, the limit to adding water to it and thus steam to it is like a thousand kilograms per tile, which is really an extraordinarily large heat capacity. Like I think if you had a thousand kilograms per tile of steam heated all the way up to 900 degrees Celsius, it could run these these steam turbines for, I, I don't have any idea, but a really long time. Regardless, that's the, that's the limitation of this build is you can only store so much heat in the heat sink. One thing you might consider doing is putting in a thermal sensor right here and connecting it to that, that liquid shut off and saying, well, if it's over 900 degrees, put some water in, right? And that makes quite a lot of sense. Now it'll happen automatically. Now that I think about it, adding that thermal sensor to add water to the heat sink is a good enough like perk that I should have built it in in the first place and included it in this build. But anyways, you know about it now. 
I want to show you how to make this build without any steel at all. The only thing in this build so far that has steel in it is the aqua tuner. So all you have to do is put an aqua tuner here that is made out of gold amalgam instead of steel. The video that I posted right before this one is called Steel Free Active Cooling. If you don't understand what I'm doing right now, it just means you have to go watch that video. I'm going to use the sandbox to make the modifications that are necessary in order to use a gold amalgam aqua tuner in this build. First of all, you'll need two more steam turbines, and that's because you won't be able to run the steam at 200 degrees. A uh, gold amalgam aqua tuner can't be 200 degrees, or else it will overheat and be destroyed. So instead, we'll just make the temperature of the steam like 145 or so. At 145 degrees, the gold amalgam aqua tuner will be just fine, but the steam turbines won't produce as much power or delete as much heat. In order to compensate for that, you just need more steam turbines. Let's see, obviously I have to replace our steel aqua tuner with the gold amalgam aqua tuner, so I'll do that. I'll connect those uh, steam turbines to power, and I'll connect the vents from those steam turbines to the outputs. Like I said, we have to make sure that the steam in this room stays at about 145 instead of 200. So I'm going to change this thermo sensor to be 145. We'll put some temp shift plates in here. This will help to spread the heat away from the aqua tuner. And we'll brush in a little bit of oil on the floor. And that's, that's there so that the aqua tuner can give up its heat with a high enough conductivity. You need to extend the cooling pipe from the cooling loop all the way down here to the end, otherwise this last steam turbine will overheat. And that's it. That's our gold amalgam aqua tuner setup. That seems like the end of this video. This looks like it's working pretty well. A lot of people have been asking for how to deal with a, a metal volcano so that they can deal with that heat and to get the metal out. I think it'll actually be quite a lot easier. And the reason is because metals have very high conductivity, so they're much easier to cool down. I have some other ideas for how to do that in a real elegant way for a metal volcano, uh, so I might not actually go with a variation of this setup. Keep your eye out for that. I, Unless I have a lot of trouble with it for some reason, it should be next and it shouldn't be long.